As a reminder, Iowa State's locker room is open until 2.50 p.m. Please silence all cell phones. Welcome to today's press conference for the Iowa State Cyclone student athletes. Iowa State's sports information director is Sarah Dyson. Today we are joined by student athletes Addie Brown, Audie Crooks, and Emily Ryan. We'll now take questions for the student athletes. Please state your name and affiliation at the beginning of each question. If you're on the Zoom call and have a question, use the raise hand function and I will call on you if we have time for your question. Tommy Birch, Des Moines, Rochester. Uh, Audie, I'm just curious, how do you possibly follow up a performance like last night? Um, I'm just gonna stick to the game plan. I say that in every interview, do whatever I can, take whatever opportunities come to me. Last night, obviously, that was interesting. So <laughs> I mean, not every game is gonna be like that. However, I'm just gonna take what the team gives. Hi, ladies. Janie McCauley from Associated Press. Um, the Des Moines Police, I don't know their, their post. Uh, Tar, you know, Adi, we, we, we can laugh about it, but also we're just talking to Tara Vanderveer. That could reach some, some non-basketball fans. That could bring some eyes or maybe an audience that um, brings even more attention to your sport and your program. I, I guess I'm, I'm thinking big picture here. It, it was clever, right? But um, what were all of your thoughts on that, and, and what, did that, what did that mean to you? Go ahead, Audie. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> um, cool that uh, the police department is watching and is noticing, and like you said, that does draw a lot of attention to our program and to women's basketball, so I think it's just a positive thing overall. Emily, any, any, any thoughts? I mean, is that a, a, a way that maybe without even realizing it, more, more eyes could, could come to your, your team? Yeah, yeah, I echo what Audie said. It, anytime you can bring different eyes to the women's game is specifically, it's special. And there's a lot of momentum around the women's game right now. And so um, just to see that continue and to have Audie uh, be a big part of that is really special. And um, we just want to continue to move the ball forward. Tommy Birch, Des Moines Register. Emily, um, I heard it looked like over behind the bench you had a ton of family. How many? How many people made the trek? And I understand your dad made quite the haul driving. Yeah, uh, I think I filled out nine tickets. So nine, nine family members here. Uh, my dad isn't a fan of flying. And so he made the 25 hour drive by himself <laughs> while the others flew. And so um, I'm just super grateful to have a family that supports me like that. And they're always right behind me. And, just be able to experience all this with them and for them to come along on the ride. It, it's something special and something that we cherish. And um, throughout the years I've been here, we've been able to see a lot of different places that we never would have been able to see. And uh, I'm just glad that they get to experience it as well. You said nine, is that all family or just some friends too? Or what's kind of the makeup of the crowd? Yeah, so that's my four siblings, mom, dad, aunt, uh, soon to be sister-in-law, and then, um, uh, Godfather. Marissa and Jimmy, San Francisco Chronicle. Um, Audie, just what do you think about the matchup with Cam Brink and Kiki Arioff, and what do you think about their games, and are you looking forward to going up against them? Yeah, I mean, they're, um, <clears throat> they're both really good players. Stanford, obviously, is a great program, and uh, it'll be interesting. I think it'll be a fun matchup. Uh, because Maryland didn't necessarily have a lot of size down low or, or on their team in general, and this team is kind of the opposite of that. So uh, we'll just have to adjust, and, and I'm just going to continue to do what I do. Along those lines, um, even Emily, for, for not just, just in the post, but, but players who are, are attacking the basket, and your team likes to do that, Addy, as well, um, how do you sort of brace for the shot blocking ability that's in the paint on that team with two, with two you know premier shot blockers and just continuing to focus on what you do to attack without necessarily letting them fluster you or, or alter what your your plan is yeah it kind of reminds me of growing up when i was playing against my sister who was way taller than me and swatted my shot all over the place so um no they're really good shot blockers inside especially cameron and so we just got to be smart um and be ready for that and know that she's going to come over and 
I mean, we can't be afraid of that either. We've got to stay aggressive, but also be ready to find, you know, uh, kicks to the outside for open shots. Kennedy Brown. Uh, for any of you guys, um, obviously this year you have five freshmen in your nine-player rotation that's kind of out there every game. You've been through all this adversity. You're down 20, make the comeback. You're into the round of 32. Is there any sense that obviously the confidence has grown, but you're playing with house money and you really got nothing to lose going into this game on Sunday? Yeah, I think that's kind of how we view every matchup. Go in, go into it, and just know that you know you got to give your all, regardless of what might happen, regardless of you know the number next to your name. It doesn't matter if you're ranked or not. You just got to continue to do what you do, and and we just try to approach every game with the mindset of uh, the result should be should should represent just us do, being our best selves, playing our game, and and we just try to do that every night. Alex Simon from SF Gate. Hattie, the Big 12 is quite a deep conference, but the way that Stanford kind of brings two post players that are elite level talents, is there anybody that you can think of that you guys have faced this season that compares to them in that way? I wouldn't say no, not in the Big 12 as far as two. I mean, we've definitely seen one, um, but no, I mean, they're unique in having two post, post players that can kind of do the same thing. So it'll be a new look for us. Only, it just since obviously they're freshmen, they only got one year. You've got a few more in the college level. Is there anybody that you can think of that even in your career has come close to what they can present as a challenge inside? Yeah, I think uh, my early years, Texas had a couple bigs at one time. And so I think that's kind of something that is similar. But there's, there's not another player that's like Cameron Brink. She's kind of one of one. And so that's something that will be interesting to play against and something that we'll have to adjust to on the fly. And once you're in the... NCAA tournament, you're oftentimes playing teams that you've never seen before and in conferences where they played a little bit different. So that's a fun part of this time of season. It's a different game and you're seeing different people. And so we'll definitely have to embrace that challenge tomorrow. Audie, what have the last 12 hours or whatever since the game been like for you? Because it seemed like there were a ton of people on social media praising you. You know, you end up on Sports Center. What's What's your reaction been like to the the impact it had, and then what's some of the coolest things you've seen online? Like sure. William Boston tweeted <clears throat> about you. Yeah, no, um, yeah, like you said, social media. Once they get a hold of something, it's out there, and and it kind of went all over all the platforms. But it's been cool to see the support and just people, you know, starting to recognize the greatness of our program of women's basketball as a whole. Uh, I'm not going to take too much credit because, I, like I said, none of that would have happened without these people here. Um, but, yeah, like Aaliyah Boston, Candace Parker, I saw Isaiah Thomas. Like, those are really big people, really great names. And just to, to know that they're watching or that they notice us, us hooping, and, and, like, I feel like the world's paying a lot more attention to women's basketball, and as they should. So I'm just happy to, to be a part of that. Uh, Couch Stamp at the Stanford Daily. Um, Audie, I think um, Maryland, they were kind of playing you. I know they were like fronting you a little bit and then also maybe providing you know, help from the backside. Um, do you expect Stanford to maybe play you a little bit differently? Um, you know, now that obviously you, uh, <laughs> you had the game you had uh, sure. the other night. Sure. Uh, we've seen multiple different things from them. They fronted other players, but also I've seen them try to go one on one in the paint. So um, we're just early on going to look and see what they do and we'll adjust accordingly. Hey, y'all. Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Um, Emily, I want to ask, you know, Eddie kind of just mentioned um, when they're going to be packing the paint, there's going to be opportunity for kickout. So out on the perimeter, um, what's your mindset? Kind of what do you think to be, to be best prepared when you know there's going to be those opportunities? Yeah, I think all year we've played best when we play inside out. And so um, trying to get the ball inside and then when they double in and send a lot to the post they, they do a great job of kicking it out And so that's when we get our best looks from the three-point line And so I think that'll be important for us just to try to get it inside out And then if they are sending to right away just skip passes a lot of times are open And so I think a big thing is just staying shot ready and then we have a lot of people that can hit shots And so just shooting it with confidence just to make it simple, I'll just make this a question for Addy. Ben Parker, CardinalSportsReport.com. Just uh, <clears throat> from your perspective, how nice is it to have a game under your belts in this gym, in this environment? Just how much does that kind of help psychologically to 
already have played a game in, in Maples and just kind of get a feel for the place? Yeah, I think it helps a lot. I think we had some nerves uh, early on, and I think that helped kind of getting some of those uh, nerves out for our first game and definitely feeling more confident going into our second game in the arena with the lights and just all the different atmospheres. So I think it's a big part just to have that one under our belt moving on to the next game. Hi, ladies. Janie McCauley from AP again. Um, when, when freshmen, when new players come in and, and freshmen and mix with upperclassmen, it doesn't, it doesn't always come together right away, but this, this group seems to have just the right balance of, of great chemistry. I mean, just watching you for one, for one night, but um, uh, how has that all been so s seamless, I, I guess, or, or has it been over the months um, to incorporate some freshman starters and, and for everybody to, to take on their roles? Yeah, uh, I, I don't think seamless is the right word that, uh, to, to put on this type of season. It's one of those seasons where you just show up every day and do what we can to improve. And there's been a lot of ups and a lot of downs. And that's what's fun about this team is that we embrace each challenge with each other rather than brace, embracing it by ourselves. And so I think that's made us grow a lot throughout the season. And it, age, honestly, on this team isn't an important thing. I think that's part of what comes with having five freshmen. but. Everyone just shows up every day and does their part regardless of if you're a senior or if you're a freshman or how long you've been in this program. And so I think it's just a matter of doing your job every single day and everyone's embraced their role and not trying to do too much, not trying to shy away from their, their spot. And so I think that's super important for us and then the coaches have done an incredible job of put, putting us in places that we can be successful. Alex, I'm an S of gay. Out of you, it was pretty hilarious to at least me maybe the others too when Nymir was coming with you to the tv table after the game and is screaming at the announcer she had 40 she was. it was even audible on the broadcast is what i was told what what was that like when she was doing that for you to the people who you know were probably aware that you had yeah. 40 points <laughs> no it just means a lot like i mean everybody has their night once in a while you know and so that just happened to be my night, and I was probably, I don't know, maybe even more excited than anybody else in that gym. She was happy, she was giving me hugs, she was letting everybody know, even though I think the announcers, like you said, already knew, but she's just a lot of fun, and, and uh, it just feels good to, to have that support from teammates. We'll do one last question from Ben. <clears throat> Ben Parker, Carnival Sports, Sports .com. Um, this, is, this is up for grabs. I don't care who answers this question, so y'all can kind of like rebound, grab it. Um, just talk about what is what is your favorite part about being an Iowa State Cyclone, and maybe what's something that people out here in the Bay Area don't know about Iowa State that they should know. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah. I'll say my favorite part of being a Cyclone is just like the culture. I mean, I don't know if you, if you guys have seen like our home game crowds. They pack it every night in Hilton and just being able to like go to Walmart and have five fans come up to you and tell you how much they love seeing you play, like it's a big thing for us. And that's kind of why I picked Iowa State was because of the fans and the coaching staff. Um, they just do a great job and it's, it's fun to play in front of that crowd uh, night in. Yeah, so yeah. What would you say? I don't know about anything they don't know. I don't know. Um, What's something fun? Juicy Wiggle. Oh, yeah. Mm. If you don't know, you should know. Yeah. Juicy yeah. Wiggle. Can we get is, that cued for tomorrow's game? Yeah, please and thank <laughs> you. Around the third quarter, please. <laughs> thank you, Addie, Audie, and Emily. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank we'll now you. take a short Thanks, break and be back with Iowa State head coach Bill Fenley. Iowa State's locker room is open until 2.50 p.m. <laughs> 